Hey everyone, uh, my name is David Rao and I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. You can also find my ideas on Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, and a variety of other places when you search for my name, David Rao, or Make Moments Matter. Um, so tonight I'm continuing my Use It and Lose It series. Um, things, ideas that you should use and try out and things that, uh, or ideas that you should lose and sort of Pushed by the wayside tonight, I'm talking about concerts specifically. I'm going to talk about um, my upcoming fourth grade concert, which is patriotic themed. So um, I'm going to be sharing about that in just a second. I'm going to be sharing what I did last year, what I'm doing this year, why I'm doing it differently, and some things about that. Um, if you hear any time me talk about a, a book, a resource, a website, something you might be interested in, um, and I say it's on the links page, there's a whole page on my blog dedicated to the things I talk about. You can find a link to that at the bottom of the caption of wherever it is you are watching this video um, or listening to, there should be um, in the caption. Otherwise, you can go to my blog, makemomentsmatter.org and find it. Okay, so um, I'm gonna talk about my program that I'm about to do that's gonna happen next week. Um, and I'm going to tell you um, all the stuff that I'm using for that and why. But first, let's talk about programs um, in general. So my thought about concerts or programs has sort of changed over the, the years. Um, and so now when I think about concerts or programs, I try and think about like a, a scope of programs, like not just like what I'm doing this year, but like what the students are going to experience between their grades K through five. So by the time they leave, um, I want them to have a, a variety of experiences. I want them to have, because I know that like just my style is not everyone's style. And so I want them to have experiences that, that all sorts of students are going to enjoy and make memories for them. Um, and so I want um, them to have some sort of musical sort of type experience, not like full blown Lion King with like all of the um, props and everything, but something that has like a script and has some sort of action and, and sort of stuff like that. Um, I want them to do something that's based around a children's book or maybe a couple children's books where we add in uh, stories and songs and things that like go along with that book. Um, I want them to have some sort of experience where they get to incorporate folk dance, maybe sharing it with their parents, maybe just um, maybe it's a part of the program, but I want that to be um, a part of what we do. Um, and then I also want some kind of experience, uh, maybe mixed in with the others, where they get to show off their creativity. Maybe where they improvise for parents, maybe we put together a song that we've created together as a class, um, trying to get some instrumental playing in there, maybe recorder, but for sure, um, xylophones, glockenspiels, uh, metallophones, all those pitch percussion instruments. I want parents to see those because a lot of parents associate that with what we do, but also like if the PTA is investing money in them, like I want them to see that showing up in concerts. And um, I also want kids to get a chance to show off all this amazing pitch percussion instrument playing that we're doing in the classroom. I want their parents to see that. So in my head, I want them to have just a whole gamut of experiences. So between kindergarten and fifth grade, by the time they leave my school, I want them to have something that's more of a musical, something that's based on books, something with folk dance, something with instrumental playing, trying to tie in improvisation. Um, I want them to have a, a good variety of experiences so that it's not just like every year the same thing. It's not just we stand in the risers and sing. It's not just, you know, I don't want that experience because I think a lot of parents come in with like, well, that's what they're going to do at the concert. And then we do something else and it's very surprising to them. So I, I don't want kids to just stand up and sing, although that, that's going to happen at some point um, in their career. Um, so I, I want them to have a variety of experiences, but that is not the expectation of every single person who goes to or experiences a concert. So I have found, because I've worked at a couple different schools in my career, I found if you have thoughts about like concerts and programs and you want to change things at your school, that's going to take some time because uh, concerts are very important to most schools and how they um, use concerts within the school community is different at every school. And I know that they're a big deal because I remember being asked in like literally every interview I've done, like, what do you think about concerts? Or what are some concerts you've done in the past? Or, you know, here's how we've done it. What do you, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like it, it's, it's a big part of that elementary school culture. And so being aware of that is really important as you go in and think about 
okay, well, maybe I want to change something, or maybe I don't want it to be exactly the same. So, for example, um, over the years, I have had concerts that I've wanted to do or try out and I've had a little bit of pushback from different principals over the years and sometimes that's because like I remember even in a couple job interviews they've said well such and such a grade does the big winter concert or uh, this grade does blah 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 or historically we've always done x y and z and so to change those traditions um, takes a little bit of time and effort not that it can't be done it just takes some time and effort so um, what I'm going to talk about tonight is the patriotic themed um, concert that's happening at my school. And again, I think it's really interesting because like when I interviewed for this job, I was told like, oh yeah, fourth grade does a Veterans Day program. They've done it for forever. Well, when I got the job and I started looking at a past programs, it was like, oh no, second grade did it for a long time. And before that, nobody did it. And so it's like, well, maybe, maybe we can forge new traditions, you know, but, but changing traditions and changing processes takes time. Um, so things to think about if you're thinking about um, how to set up concerts programs at your school or how to change them is you have to consider a couple things. First, the culture and the expectations at your school. Is there an expectation for what you're going to do? Where does that expectation come from? Does it come from the classroom teachers, from your administration? Does it come from your school community, the parents? You know, what is this expectation? And is it changeable? So for example, if you're following someone who like taught at the school for like 20 years, 15 years, whatever, and they always did X, Y, and Z, can you change that? Well, it depends on what it is they were doing, why you want to change it, it, what the commitments are for the school. There are a lot of things to think about as you're thinking about like, can I change this tradition or this idea? Another thing to think about is how much can you handle? Because if you're like, okay, I want to change X and Y and Z and X and Y and Z and these like all these different things, you can only handle so much preparation and change. So maybe if you're like, I really want to do Lion King the musical. I don't know why that's, <laughs> I said that twice. I don't know, this just must be, it was in my head. If I want to do Lion King Jr., Lion King the musical, you got to think like, okay, well, if I'm going to get to that, how am I going to do that? I probably can't do that my first year. I need to build up my students' voices. I need to build their um, abilities. I need to talk about, I need to work on acting. We need to get dancing. You know, I need to get parents involved in set making, all sorts of stuff. And probably getting started with Lion King is not the thing to do. Probably maybe start with something smaller. Like if you're going to build up, I don't know. But if, if that could be true of folk dancing or instrument playing, like all sorts of stuff. And I have seen that over the years. I'm now at this school is my fourth year, fifth year, fourth, fourth year, I think. And, um, what my students are doing now, they could not have done in that first year. And so it just takes time to build on skills and build on their abilities and their expectations to do more. Um, another thing to think about is uh, your principal's expectation. That's a big one because your principal drives a lot of the things that happen at the school and some principals are very hands off about concerts. Some principals are very, very involved in concerts. So it depends on your principal's expectations because that also plays into like your evaluation and like your relationship with your administration. And so thinking about that is um, definitely something to consider. So if you're thinking about changing the program or changing um, what happens at your school, you need to think about the culture and expectations around programs and concerts, what you can handle, what you can conceivably change in the amount of time that you have to do that, and then also the expectation from admin um, before you ever try and change something. So for example, let me go back to my fourth grade concert that I'm going to share about in just a minute. Um, when I got to the school, they said, it's a Veterans Day program. Fourth grade has done a Veterans Day program. We'd like to keep doing that. Um, and I was like, okay. Great. Um, and so that first year was, um, I'm trying to remember how long ago, I think it was an, an election year even. So I was like, great, a patriotic program. Absolutely. Let's do it. And so um, I programmed a couple of patriotic pieces, things about the United States, um, some songs that are like octavos or like two-part things or whatever that were like partner songs or just different songs that were patriotic themed, but maybe not like, you know, I don't know, maybe not like um, Battle Hymn of the Republic. I mean, it was like, it was like hats off to America, this, this uh, octavo I had done for years and years at other schools. Um, and so then that program was all like, like pretty patriotic, pretty much like America, Americana um, sort of stuff in there. And, um, I, and I didn't like 
copy paste what the person before me had done because I didn't really know exactly what she had done, but also like I wanted to sort of do my own take on it. So that's what happened the first year, but I did not want to do a like straight patriotic program every year. And also when they would, when they were talking about it, they would say, they wouldn't say patriotic. They would say it's a veterans day program. And I was like, but what does that mean? A veterans day program? Because how many songs can we do about veterans? How many songs are there about veterans? What exactly? Because if I'm thinking like, how are we going to do it? What all is going to be included? Well, something patriotic, right? But I'm, I'm not, the, I, I've never taught like the um, the songs of the armed forces and I don't intend to. Um, I know lots of people have strong feelings about that, but like I don't want to teach the songs of the armed forces, like the different, like the, the army song and the marine song or whatever, because number one, I think they're really pretty tricky for kids to do. Um, number two, that is not in my curriculum. Um, yes, teach some patriotic songs, but to teach them to join the military is not in my curriculum. And so um, because they're such tricky songs, they're not really um, geared towards elementary voices or elementary content. It's just really tricky language. And some of the ranges are weird. I just was like, I'm not going to teach the those songs. If they want to learn them in middle school or high school, that seems more appropriate as far as like the content and the range and the ability to remember all that stuff. It's just a lot. Um, and then you know, so, so that I was like, well, then what could I do for veterans? You know, there are, so, there are a lot of cool songs you can find that honor veterans, um, or that like, you know, name the five or the name, the branches, but maybe not, um, sing the branch songs or whatever. So, uh, as I was like trying to craft, what can I do with these? Um, I sort of developed over the years, uh, something a little different. So that first year was more patriotic. The second year I was like, well, I, I want it to be patriotic ish. And I want to mention veterans, but I don't, I don't know how, I, I'm not going to copy and paste from the previous year because it's going to make me go crazy. I don't want to do the exact same thing again, um, but I'm not sure what to do. So I was like, what could I do that's up about America, but still interesting? And I was like, let me do something about the states. Because again, it was like not a, it was not a, um, an election year. So I was like, well, how patriotic am I going to get? So that year I did this, the program called Every State is Great. And um, I did a whole video on that. If you want to go through and learn all, all of the specifics, I've linked that on the links page if you want to go back and watch all that. Uh, but basically it was like there was an opening song. Uh, there was... Uh, we did the the great state debate where um, each homeroom got to sing a song from a different state. So there was like one did uh, Deep in the Heart of Texas. One did You Are My Sunshine, which was written by You Are My Sunshine, My Only Sunshine, which was written by a former governor of, I think, Arkansas. Um, and then we did, uh, what else? Give My Regards to Broadway and uh, Clementine, because that was like sort of a California theme song. So um so each class got their own song, which is cool. They got to feature that. And then we um, did Home on the Range because that's the Kansas State song. We did a song uh, based on like puns that are based around state names. Like what did Della wear? She wore a New Jersey. There's a, a bunch of songs that you can do around that. Um, and then we did the 1550 United States and we worked in a song that honored veterans. And it was like, well, you know, we couldn't be the country we are today and enjoy all these states, you know, the, the states couldn't flourish or whatever without the contributions of veterans. So there was a veteran song worked in and we did honor veterans and kids got to send in pictures of um, people they knew who were in the armed forces. But it wasn't like the whole program was that. It was patriotic and state themed. Um, and then we worked in the veterans. Um, so that was last year and that works pretty well. The song that I used for honoring the veterans that was not the military um, choruses, um, it's called The Lights of Freedom. I got it recommended to me by someone who watched uh, Musical Mondays like three years ago. Um, and it's it's a super great song. Um, it's from Music K8. I linked it on the links page. Um, if you're interested in it, so the original does um, like a sort of a verse and then a little chorus thing and in between each one music k8 suggests that you like name off the states but instead we just i just like for each little break where like the states are being named i said like the united states army is a you know um america's uh, forces on the land or i can't remember the blurb the little blurb i said and then like for you know for the air force the air force is you know uh, 
protects us through the skies and blah, blah. There's like a little three or four sentence thing. And then as we, as we had that voiceover, pictures of veterans that students had sent in, we put up on the big slideshow. Really cool, fit in just fine the last couple of years, and it was great. Um, and that was sort of how we did it. Um, and so then this year, I was like, okay, I want to do another take or something different. Um, and so I decided to go a little bit further off the path. Of, it's a solely veterans program, and we're deciding to go, but still talking about the United States, still working in veterans, but how can we do that? Um, and originally at the beginning of the year, I was like, I don't know, I could do something about like community partners, which is, you know, like the term that I've heard used for like uh, jobs in the community that are like service jobs, like firefighter and um, police department and nurse and like just different like jobs that serve the community. I was like, maybe that'll be what I'll do this year. I don't know. Like that's what I was thinking I would, I would want to do. And then <laughs> inspiration hit me. Um, and so... I decided to go with, um, this was, uh, as I was thinking about this, like the Eras tour was like a super huge deal um, and everyone was talking about it. And um, I was like, okay, I have this crazy idea. So I decided to do um, America, the Eras tour, because I don't know if you know this, but there are six identified eras of the United States, um, the development of the United States, starting with, um, I wonder if I have them all written down. Pre-colonial, um, American Revolution, New Nation, Civil War and Reconstruction, uh, Industrial Expansion. I can't remember all of them, but there are six of them. And I was like, okay, so I could do like a song for each era uh, and it could still be like eras tour and we could go through and talk about the different eras and how much fun would that be? And I was like, okay, great. So that's how I started out the program. And I was like, okay, so as I'm like brainstorming, I'm like, pull, I pulled up the era, the different eras. So there, there are several identified ones. There's like industrial expansion. Um, there's new nation. There's colon, uh, American revolution, civil war and reconstruction, new era. So there, like, if you look it up, there are like six specific eras that are like the predetermined eras of the United States. So as I was trying to do that, I was like, I can still take this idea from last year where each homeroom gets one song that is like their feature song that they get to sing all by themselves. Why do I like to do that? Well, because um, it gives them a chance to highlight something that just one class is doing. You get to hear those voices a little bit more isolated um, instead of just hearing one big mass of singing. It also means that that class gets to like come to the front of the stage. So parents like get a photo of their kid up in the front. Um, and it means that I don't have, I, I teach more songs, but I'm not like each of those songs, like, so Miss, Miss Schaefer's class song, I'm not teaching that to all of the fourth grade, just her class. So that means the amount of time it takes to teach the program gets shrunk down because like the week or that I'm teaching the class songs, I'm teaching one song to each homeroom. So in a week's time, I'm able to teach four different songs, which sort of bulks out the program just a little bit, makes it longer without me taking more time to prep more songs, if that makes sense. So um, I was trying to plug in like what songs work with what eras. Um, and so this is sort of what I came up with. And then of course I had to write the script. So um, the script is this, the kids come in, they're like, ah, and welcome to Taylor Swift's Eras Tour. We're so glad you're here. And someone's like, this isn't the Taylor Swift Eras Tour. This is the tour of the United States, the, like the Eras of the United States. And they're like, wait, Taylor's not coming? Are you sure Taylor's not coming? I made all these friendship bracelets. Why would I do that? And some, I wish someone wouldn't have would have told me this. I wouldn't have invited Travis Kelsey's family or whatever. So like, uh, it's this like interplay joking between like, is it the is it Taylor or is it? And so the first song we sing is called "All American Me and You." It's another Music Kate song. Um, it's a super fun little song, pretty easy for them to learn, and um, it's like a, a great opener. It's it's quick, it's fast, and then the a class comes out and says. Uh, okay, so it's not about Taylor Swift. I'm pretty sure it's not about Taylor Swift. Um, and then someone was like, but you know, Taylor Swift and American history are pretty similar. Um, and so it's like, wait, what do you mean? So they were like, well, actually, you know, um, uh, okay, what do they say? They have a lot in common. You know, they both have developed and changed over the years. They both have these different eras and whatever. Um, and so someone's like, okay, quiz, is this about the United States or is it a Taylor Swift lyric? And so they say, the quote is, you're not my homeland anymore, so what am I defending now? And some kid's like, easy. That's something the colonists said about Great Britain during the Revolutionary War. The colonists said, we are never, ever, ever getting back together. 
And they're like, exactly. And so Miss Schaefer's class is going to come out and sing Yankee Doodle or whatever. So like we, I have a song for each of the eras. And for each one, it's like, I, I have a kid come out and say like, is this a Taylor Swift lyric or about the United States? Every single, every single um, scene features a Taylor Swift lyric. It's always a Taylor Swift lyric, but it does always have some connection to United States history, which is hilarious. So the first one is, uh, you're not my homeland anymore, so what am I defending now? So that's about um, the American Revolution. So we sing a song from the American Revolution. The next quote uh, from the next scene is, we're happy, free, confused, and lonely in the best way. It's mis- miserable and magical. Oh yeah, tonight's the night when we forget about the heartbreaks. Is that a Taylor Swift lyric about the United States? And some kid is like, that one's easy. It's U.S. history. It's definitely talking about the era we call the new nation. America had just won the Revolutionary War, but we were figuring out how to be a country all on our own. Happy, free, confused. There was a lot to figure out. So then the next class sings, my country, tis of thee. Um, The next scene is, uh, the quote is, you can change your hair and you can change your clothes. You can change your mind. That's just the way it goes. You can say goodbye. You can say hello, but you'll always find your way back home. And the class goes, oh yeah, well, that's for sure. That's that's about the era called national expansion. This is, <laughs> so it reminds me of this song called Home on the Range. And then all the class gifts sing Home on the Range, which is our state song. Um, then the next scene they say, the quote is, I used to know my place was a spot next to you. Now I'm searching the room for an empty seat because lately I don't even know what page you're on. And someone's like, well, that's the Civil War era because there were Americans fighting Americans. Everyone was hurting. There was this division. Um, so then they sing When Johnny Comes Marching Home Again. Um, the next one is, the next quote, the next scene is, I tried to pick my battles till the battle picked me. And the kid goes, that one's easy. It's talking about the legend of John Henry. It comes from the era we call the rise of industrial America. Uh, I tried to pick my battles till the battle picked me. So then we sing John Henry. Um, the next quote is, uh, you open the door and there's so much more. I'd never seen it before. I was trying to fly, but I couldn't find wings, but you came along and you changed everything. And so then we, t- that is our tie into the veteran songs. We're saying you did all these things. You made all this possible. And we, we sing our song about the veterans. And then the last quote for the last scene is, this is the golden age of something good and right and real. And I never saw you coming and I'll never be the same. And the last kid says, easy peasy, mac and cheesy. That's about the era we're in called the new era. And it's a time of freedom and exploration all together as a nation. And then we sing 15 50 United States. End of program. So, <laughs> but my favorite is there's, um, there's one kid, they like say a quote and there's a kid, there's a line that goes, I'll be honest at this point, I just think they're all Taylor lyrics, but this one definitely could be about, and then, so like the whole show is, is it Taylor, is it the United States? But like legitimately, there were lyrics for everything I wanted to do, every era, every song. Um, and so you could substitute out a lot of the songs if you wanted. So like I chose... Uh, like when Johnny comes marching home. If you had a different song from the Civil War era or Reconstruction that you wanted to do instead, you absolutely could. Um, or like I chose John Henry for like Industrial America because that's like a pretty well-known folk song and a tall tale that kids learn pretty pretty often. And so I was like, that seems like it's like in the can and I want them to hear it. And this is a great reason to do that. So all the songs pretty much work together. And like, is it? patriotic and veteran themed yes is that the only focus no um and so i can still work in a lot of the songs from my curriculum i can still push kids so that they can try new things and explore new things and i'm not doing the same thing every year because that is if i i can't handle that so um i my use it and lose it this week would be um the lose it is lose the idea that you must do everything the same way every year or that you have the set of programs that you cannot change, that there's a set of expectations like you must do it this way. You cannot deviate from that because I think that you could, you can make changes. That's why at the beginning of the video, I talked about the evolution of how you might change things over time. And the use it is here are some ideas of how you could maybe format a program and fill in things here and there um, to make it match what you want to do. Um, so like, I don't think I'll ever be able to do this program ever again, because it like sort of riffs on the whole like Taylor Swift era's tour, which will not be in the zeitgeist next year or the year after or the year after, unless like, I don't know, in 10 more years, she does another era's tour and then I'll be pulling the script back out. But um, it does allow me to 
um, feature all the songs I want to do and still hit the standards and still hit the school culture expectations um, that, that are sort of there and in place. Um, and is it exactly what we've done in previous years? No. Will it be fun for the kids? Yes. Will it be memorable? I really hope so. Um, yeah, so it's it, it's pretty fun. It's fun that the kids get to explore this and try this. And, and I'm really hoping that it goes over well. And I told kids, you can wear friendship bracelets. You can wear anything red, white, and blue. If you want to wear something Taylor Swift inspired, that's totally fine. But again, try and do red, white, and blue. Um, and so that makes the costume expectations pretty simple. Um, I'm not really having to deviate or teach anything outside of the norm of what I wanted to teach for this semester anyway. It's a lot of the songs and experiences that they would have got, um, gotten in the normal classroom, but it still sort of fits with, um, it fits with the theme. Okay, also, one of my favorite little quotes in here is, um, Okay, yeah, we hope you enjoyed this tour of all the airs of the United States, and we hope you weren't fooled into believing Taylor would be here for the concert. And the next kid says, for the record, all references to Taylor Swift and Era's tour are purely coincidental. If we learned anything from Taylor Swift, it's that we do not want to go up against her in a copyright battle. She'll win. So anyway, so it's this like fun nod and to the whole Era's tour phenomenon and... Um, anyway, it's happening next week, so I will report back if it all flops. But um, so far, kids are pretty excited about it, and I think it's going to sound really great. But as I said before, uh, lose the idea that like concerts must be a certain thing or a certain way. You can do what you want to do within the expectations of like your school community and your admin, and um, it just takes little changes over time. You're not going to make a huge, huge, huge shift because that will overtax your community and you. Um, but do keep this idea and use this idea that like you can make small shifts over time and that eventually you can get to a different um, program or concert experience than maybe you've had before, but it's still super valuable, fits the content and fits the kids in your community. Okay, well, um, I hope that I'll see many of you next week, but actually I hope I'll see many of you before that because I'm going to go to AOSA National Conference this week. Um, I'm so excited because the last couple years I've been like on a committee or presenting or working for the social media team for AOSA or something, and this is like the first year in a long time where I just like get a go. So if you're there, please come and say hi and like let's hang out and um uh, and if you're not there, you should come. Next year, the AOSA National Conference is going to be in Des Moines, Iowa. It's always like the first week of November. So like plan it for it now. It is the like some of the best PD you will ever get because it is like three straight days of just what we do, just elementary, really processed out lessons, really smart people presenting, really wonderful uh, groups performing. So if you've never been put it on your calendar for next year. But if you're going this year, I hope I'll see you there. Um, and uh, if I don't see you there, I'll see y'all next week for another Musical Mondays video. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great night.